I'm very happy to be here. Uh, and thank you for uh, for inviting me. I really appreciate it. I think it's uh, one of the things I have found fascinating, especially the last few times that we have been together, is somehow in your preview, you end with not in preview, uh, not in my your introduction of me, but the preview, you actually pick up on some of the themes that I plan to talk about. So the, uh, we are in Tammuz, which is a, a time of high energy and lots of heat. And of course, in the Torah, we are in um, the, uh, we're still in the wilderness, but Midbar, this subliminal space. And I also feel like, um, even as I'm excited about leading services again, that it's a whole new thing, even though I've done it before, I'm having to learn how to do it now under slightly different circumstances and uh, to help the people I'm working with to retrain things. And I imagine that a lot of us are in that space of, I'm so happy to be, in fact, everybody's talked about how happy are, they are to be able to be with people again. And at the same time, there's hesitation about things reopening what feels like very quickly. And that feels like totally appropriate for the beginning of Tammuz, as, and certainly for entering uh, the study of Korach, because it is, it's not even the end of the rebellions that happen in Bet Bar. It's just the next rebellion in Bet Bar. And so whether your energy is, I'm excited and hesitant, uh, I, I saw lots of desire for personal and for familial and global blessings. Wherever you are, take that energy and just be with it. Just, it doesn't have to compete. It can all be with us at the same time. And my invitation to you as we move through this set is to resist picking one, to really let everything that wants to be with you right now be with you. It's not about splitting attention. It's about expanding attention. And if there is something that is really calling you to just be with it, if you want to go there, or you can also invite all the other energies that are with you to also be with it and see what that feels like. This is not gonna, it's gonna be a high energy time because of things that are happening both uh, globally and personally and moving through transformation is never an easy thing to do. It's not even, uh, it's exciting and fun and it's also absolutely terrifying. So by being with all of it, and sometimes excitement and terror have the same energy. You know, so being with all of it is a way of not choosing, it's a way of being with all. Expanding who we are, uh, naturally easy, of course, if you read any real resistance that you don't want to go past, that's okay too. All is welcome in this moment. So I invite you to take a moment as we breathe together. Uh, we're going to do three times to the count of four, hold, and uh, to the count of four, release, slight pause, and repeat. On the last one, I invite you to, as you exhaled, to release whatever needs to be released, and that includes sound. And uh, if you're joining us for the first time, I will warn you, I will make a sound. I've already had a very full morning. I'm ready, I'm ready to release that sound. So make sure you're comfortable in your, in your, wherever you're sitting or lying down. And, and that you're fully comfortable as as comfortable as you can be at this moment and take the first breath and one, two, three, four, and four, three, two, one, and one, two, three, four, and four, three, two, one. Check your shoulders and your body, your neck especially. And on this last breath out, again, I invite you to release 
whatever you need to release, including sound. And one, two, three, four. Ah. Check your body. See where there might be a little ache. You may begin to feel a circle of energy just above your head, perhaps right at the top of your head. Let it come down over your head and your face. You may begin to feel pulses in that part of your body and that's okay, nothing is wrong. Let it massage your lips and your chin, the space between your ears and your neck, all the way down to your shoulders. And let your shoulders go down as it moves down your arms. Let it flow over your back and your chest. Let it fully surround you. And anything, any ache, any pang or ping, just let it move with that energy as it flows over your lower back and your belly, your healing center, over your hips and your thighs. Remember to move it down your arms and over your elbows and into your fingers. As it moves down your thighs and over your knees. Let it just pull everything as it moves down your calves and your shins past your ankle, through the soles of your feet, and into the ground. As you breathe, check to see if there's any place that needs a little attention, and just breathe into it as you breathe. If you're looking for a way to anchor your breath, you can count 10 breaths. One in, two out, and repeat all the way to 10. And if you find yourself at any point in this meditation getting stuck on a thought, return to your breath and use that counting. Incorporate the sounds that are around you. May you be blessed with the sounds of birds or family or rain, as I am hearing. And when you're ready, anchor yourself. Anchor yourself in the earth, in the deep earth. And be in your heart and with your heart, with your heart energy as well as your physical heart, your spiritual heart, the three realms. And whatever is there, allow it to be in your lap. A reminder, there's nothing to fix. You can be with the energy and just listen to what it has to say. You can also 
at some point ask what it has to teach you or offer you? The most important thing is just to be exactly where you are.
if you haven't already done so, I invite you to think all the feelings and beings and portions of yourself that have been with you and begin the process of allowing them to be absorbed back into your body. And take your dominant hand and place it over your heart and take your other hand and point it out towards the world and feel your heart energy move into your other hand and let it go out into the world to someone in particular and know that there's enough that it can spill over spill along the way because there's plenty And take your hand that you've been pointing out and put it over your other hand and let that love fill you too. And when you are ready, Please come back to the room. And as you're coming back, I want to remind you that you are enough exactly as you are right now. And when you take care of yourself and, and, make sure, and feel yourself as plenty, then you will be plenty for others. But first be plenty for yourself. Rosh Chodesh Tov, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so, so much, Sabrina. We seal that beautiful practice with mourner's kaddish for those who are mourning, those who are observing yard site, or if you're carrying any grief today, I would like to express that with kaddish. We invite you to share the name or names of anyone in particular who you're holding in your heart today in the chat box now or after we recite Kaddish. Uh, and everyone else who's here, if you're not in that category, uh, you are extending that love as Sabrina beautifully described out throughout this circle. Uh, I invite you to join me uh, in Kaddish by rising in body or in spirit for those who are reciting Kaddish. Yit Kadal, Yit Kadash and Rava. Ama Divra Hirute, Mamlik Malchute, Bahaye Khan, Vime Khan, Haye Jacobi Israel, Agaga, Vismahan, Shri, Imru, Ame, 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 Friends, thank you so much for joining us to sit so beautifully into Shabbat together and share uh, this Rosh Chodesh, this new beginning. May it bring much blessing for all of you, for all of us, for all Israel and for all, for all beings everywhere. Um,
I want to just let us look ahead to next week. Hope you'll join us. Uh, we have a wonderful lineup of teachers again next week on Monday. Rabbi Nancy Flam, the founding executive director of IJS, longtime teacher for IJS and all around amazing human being will lead us in practice on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, Rabbi Shir Yaakov Fight will join us from uh, the Hudson Valley, upstate New York. On Wednesday, Beth Sandweiss uh, will lead us from um, Montclair, New Jersey. Thursday, uh, Mira Neshama Nicolescu will join us from Jerusalem to lead us. And on Friday, Marita Anderson will be here leading us from Atlanta. So we have a, another wonderful week of practice. Join us for any or all of those uh, next week. For those who are leaving, I want to wish you a Shabbat Shalom. We want to thank Dorian Goldman so much for um, for bringing the memory and the spirit of Rabbi Rachel Cowan, Sichron Nali Bracha, into our practice this week. As um, Marvin Israel put it, uh, describing her as a midwife for a whole generation of spiritual seekers, uh, we would not be here if not for Rachel Cowan. And wonderful to honor her memory this week. Um, thanks to Adi Stein, as always, for holding our tech support and are holding our space with grace and skill as always and um to sabrina thank you so much for leading us so heartfully today as always you're welcome to stay on for a few minutes of conversation with sabrina if you have a question or reflection on the practice and the teaching today uh, you can put it in the chat box for those who are leaving wishing you a chodesh tov shabbat shalom beautiful shabbat restorative shabbat wonderful weekend and hope to see you back next uh, next week on Monday to practice with Rabbi Nancy Flam at this time. Be well, everyone. Sabrina, I just want to check. Did you, um, I want to make sure you got your little bowl. Um, as yes, a yes. Oh, good. I, <laughs> okay. Just wanted to check that just to let I, people I was, know. I actually had meant to have it here to help in. but That's okay. That's okay. As long as you got it, just so people know, all the teachers who have led us this year, I received as a thank you from IJS a small meditation bowl with a very nice tone, nicer than that actually, and um, just and really a beautiful nice. Beautiful inscription too. Yes, yes, beautiful inscription with gratitude. So, Sabrina, um, yeah, we had a little meditation mind meld there. That's great. I love that. <laughs> um, you know. Um, I always love the you know your ocean background, but I thought it was especially apropos today when you were talking about, you know, uh, Tammuz representing the summer and the heat, and it's a Torah portion that, in which there's a lot of heat, right? A lot of heated agitation, um, a lot of action, and you invited everyone to um, notice that, you know, to bring it in, and to. I'm just paraphrasing here, you know, how I heard your teaching today to um, kind of take that heat and just like some, uh, like a hot rod that goes into cold water just from the stillness. And it struck me as I saw 280 people sitting in stillness and silence for 15 minutes that that, you know, this creates that capacity to be able to be with so many hard challenging thoughts and feelings and emotions and um and how they man they show up but here's the question that, so i did i hear you right i got yes. that okay okay yes, you did. so here's the question at the end of it which um i i know i i probably speak for many by saying that i i really love how you um always bring us back to the heart and you always bring us back to um actually making physical contact with our heart with our, our body in that way. I have really noticed how that changes everything for me mm -hmm. as an anchor. It just changes. It's incredible. It is an incredible, something as simple as you put it, of putting the dominant hand over the heart um, as an anchor. And I just wanted to remind people that when we, when you choose an anchor in, med in mindfulness meditation, although you, you know, you, you invited us to start with the breath. It doesn't have to be limited to the breath. And if the breath is not helpful to you, there are many alternatives and you offered all of them, Sabrina, the sound, the uh, se sensation, anything that anchors us in the here and now, it does not necessarily have to be the breath. 
And so I want to thank you for offering that, you know, first of all, giving people a choice and a range of choices and offering those alternatives, which are important. So um, where did thank you, you get that? Noticing. <laughs> That's okay. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Just to notice. <laughs> so where did you get, where did, can you say anything about what it means for you? The putting the hand on the heart and extending the arm, like where did you get that, if anywhere? Or did you just, is that your thing? Well, the, uh, I guess it is my thing because I, I, the person I thought I got it from doesn't do it how I do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there, uh, I had, she doesn't, uh, the, the, one of my rabbis is Rabbi uh, Lauren Holtzbelet. And, um, and occasionally I get a chance to actually sit with her and, uh, she does talk about us being with our heart and sending our energy out into the world. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I added the physicality or experienced it as a physicality when she, the first time she did it. And so I added the physicality because it really does make it, uh, much more intentional. It, and because our minds can do all sorts of things when things when we t tell our mind to do it and yet our body can really direct our mind and vice versa too but definitely help us to really be fully intentional and present to what we're doing so mm -hmm. i think that i ended up adding the physicality or imagined it the first time i did it with her and so i started using it on myself and i thought that that's where i got the teaching but that's not how she does it <laughs> well it's 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 beautiful it's beautiful she, she well here's a great the gateway to it <laughs> okay well you're you're blessed you got some wonderful you got some wonderful rabbis there at Addis Israel in, in DC yes um so there's a great question you know this is very soothing <laughs> the question is how do I keep that up into the day and I really like using this time these 15 minutes as we transition from the meditation to the rest of the day um to to engage with that question about how do we uh, that we're not just set, we're not retreating from the day to have an experience and then going back to business as usual. Right. We want to, uh, you know, just as we're doing in a, in a, on a macro level now, emerging from the cave, as it were, into whatever the world looks like now, um, we do that every day. You know, we, we go into our, you know, our, our uh, intentional place and then we transition and it's like our, our this is our Havdalah. <laughs> uh, how do we how do we bring the sweetness, the spice, the soothing, the grounding, the anchoring? How do you do it? Is the question I probably say. Like, how do you how does this shift how the rest of the day goes for you? It, it's it's shifted a lot. It really became a very important practice mm -hmm. um, during um, you know like if if I had to name how I got through COVID, mm -hmm. how I got through COVID was staying as much as I could in my body. Mm -hmm. And any time I found myself, you know, uh, overthinking something or or <laughs> being in the kitchen and breaking things that I normally don't break, it's like okay, I need to stop, calm down, and be and come back to center. And certainly, there are times when things are just very hectic. And so, what I do is I walk around for a few minutes, doing whatever I need to do with my dominant hand over my heart. Mm. You know, and it really does slow me down and bring me fully back to being present to what's going on so that I can transition much more easily into whatever I next need to do. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a, what I would describe as a very helpful hint, you know, for the rest of the day for all of us. Uh, and I just want to remind people, since we did go through the Omer not that long ago that, you know, when you, um, Obviously, the dominant, you were talking about the dominant hand. So for some people, that would be the left hand. For me, it's the right hand. So it conjures up for me, uh, you know, the right shoulder, the right arm, which represents in the Kabbalistic motif or, or rubric, the quality of chesed, of loving kindness, loving connection. And so, and the left in that rubric represents gavura, um, mm -hmm. which is really channel, you know, the channel creating a structure by which love can flow. So I also, that brings it up for me, but I will say that when, at the end, when you invited us to bring our, their hands together, I just felt flooded with emotion. I felt a lot of tears come up for myself. So I want to thank you for that, you know, in a, in a good way. They were good tears. That's to, and that's the bringing together of Gibran and, uh, 
and chesed, and so mm-hmm. it's tef- and that's teferet. That's mm-hmm. the energy flows through those. That's what the heart is. Mm-hmm. Our heart has the amazing ab- ability to hold everything, mm-hmm. all that it, all that we believe and know it, it to be good, and all the things that makes us uncomfortable or that actually hurt us. The heart holds it all. So, let me if that leads to another question. Um, look, I'm keeping an eye on the questions to see. Oh. Oh, okay. There's, I, here's a, there is a question that came. Lori, Lori always has, you have fantastic questions. Always, Lori. Um, when the sit's over, where do we carry the timid, scared, difficult parts that were brave enough to come forward in the sit? Where in our bodies can they retreat to safely and peacefully be protected and still seen? Wow. Oh, great question. that is a wonderful question. And the two places where they tend to retreat for me are into my heart and into my healing center. Yeah, and because the healing center is exactly that. It's a, an area that's about um, roughly an inch below your belly button. Some people carry it a little bit higher. Some people carry it a little bit lower. But if you are ever doing um, any kind of breath work, well, after you've been sitting for a few minutes, post the breath work, mm-hmm. you can actually move your finger down the, your center meridian and below your belly button, and you'll feel it palpitating. It, it'll take may take a few times of doing that, but that's that's one place. The place where you don't want them to go is your stomach, and that's where often, if we're when we're ignoring them, that's where they live, is in our, our stomach. But the places where they are safe are in our heart, and in our healing center. Mm. So what you described, let's take that a little step further. When you said the heart and healing center, I know we're you know speaking in terms of the body. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm wondering about um, those aspects of the body as reflecting on a spiritual level, level something beyond you know the physical embodiment. In other words, when you're using the word heart um, and uh, what did you just say? Healing center. Right. Um, I'm I'm wondering where what's the role of the soul, you know, well, and the spirit there, because okay. there I can say I, I can say like, I don't have to hold all this within me, but right. I can trust in I can trust in a God who can hold it, who can hold it with me. Absolutely, and I'm I'm going to sh- uh, share a, a short story. I will say one thing that. In, the, in terms of both centers, as I said earlier, this is t- Teferit. This is where right. boundaries and compassion meet. And that's one of the pla- why, reasons that why, why all of those, our vulnerable selves are safe here, because the, the, the heart knows how to set up a, a boundary even when we don't. And the first few times we exercise that, we might be t- tough on ourselves and other, and we'll get more relaxed as we get more practice. The the spiritual realm in terms of the healing center is actually very deeply connected to uh, the, the, the warmth and the blessings that we feel in our belly and our root when we're feeling good. There's a, there's a, I mean, there's, there, I don't know, know any other way of describing the, the capacity. I mean, for women, I think it's a little bit more uh, true, because it's also part of where our womb is, and if we've had the opportunity to have children, and even if we haven't, there are we have a relationship to that rachamim, the rachim, mm-hmm. uh, so the racham, so that the womb, and mm-hmm. the, and that's the root for rachamim, which is mm-hmm. com- one of the words for compassion and mercy. So that that is where that resides, and that's why it's called the healing center, because. Mm. It is also one of the one of, a physical pathway of knowing God. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, we're at time, Sabrina. I want to thank you as always for sharing your wisdom and your joy and your presence, which uh, I know everyone just um, really, uh, really, really appreciates. So thank you for being you and for sharing yourself and sharing your teaching in this practice. Really grateful to you. And um, I want to remind people that next week, we hope you'll join us on Monday when Nancy Flam leads us on Monday at 1230. 
and wish everyone again a Chodesh Tov, Shabbat Shalom, and thank you for being here. Thanks to ID, thanks to Dorian Goldman, and thanks for all of you, especially for being here and making this community of practice possible. Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and good luck leading services tonight. Sabrina. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you so much, Mark. Bye. Be, be